So as she said, I'm Eddie. I'm Latrice. And so as you left the show, is my advisor on this project. So the work that we did over the course of, we started in 2015 officially, but the practical work didn't start until 2016, so early 2016. Um, we were talking about the headliners and how to make HIV prevention fun. We live in the belt vocal of the Bible Bill. So we have to find a way to make HIV prevention fun in order to get the numbers down. So what is a headliner? We decided to come up, well, the group decided to come up with the name Headliners because they wanted to have everybody as the premier, as the front force, as the soundboard of um, the collaborations that we came to. We called it For Us By Us Approach, also called the Party With The Purpose. So, as Eddie kind of alluded, we're in the work in Memphis, and Memphis is known for a lot of things, a lot of great things. Um, rights history, um, world championship barbecue, um, soulful music, artists, but you know there are a couple of things that have depicted Memphis and not the great life. So there are popular shows such as First 48, movies like Hustle and Flow that have kind of depicted the um, high poverty rate as Dr. De La Vega um, spoke to earlier. Um, as well as um, socioeconomic um, issues that affect health. All right, so those are contributing factors to um, HIV, which is what we're going to be talking about today. And I don't know if you all know this, but um, despite advances in HIV treatment, prevention, care, behavioral interventions, um, Memphis actually ranks among the top 10 nationally for metropolitan statistical areas for HIV, um, as well as um, STD, sexually transmitted diseases or infections. And so, despite all of the advancements in what we have done in science, this is primarily affecting African American men, um, young people, and men who have sex with men. And so, in order for us to kind of address these health disparities, we um, subscribe to a collaborative research approach. And so, and that involves all partners in the research um, process. So we have, the research is determined by the community. And the community is involved in data collection, coming up with the research question, data interpretation, um, dissemination, and things of that nature. And so we've had a partnership, an ongoing partnership, for about 10 years with Connect to Protect, which is facilitating um, the headliners group, which Eddie's going to talk um, a great detail. So one size does not fit all. One thing that we've learned um, over time is that HIV prevention does not look the same for me as it looks for Dr. Bishan or as it looks for anyone else in the room. So the work that we wanted to do was to include the community in the planning process. So the events that we hosted, they planned everything. So my practicum was a breeze. <laughs> it was still fun. So this year, we had the um, HP10083, which is the injectable pre-exposure prophylaxis study. So in 2014 to 2015, the NIMHD and the C2 tab Confused but that was about um, testing initiatives, how we can increase testing. But in 2015 and 2016, the pre-implementation activities were set up, which kind of prom prompted my practicum, which led to the injectable study. So what pre-exposure prophylaxis is, it's a daily pill that people can take, HIV negative people can take, in order to stay negative, which reduces their chances greatly to between 90 and 99 percent, which um, decreases their risk of acquiring the virus. So last year, we started working on different, uh, working on the study, which is a five-year study, so it was really long. So we tried to find ways to make people become engaged and doing it in a fun way. So in September of 2016, we hosted our first event. We had approximately 220 attendees at the Dance Fever. We hosted it at Club Memphis right after the Southern Heritage Classic, which is huge in the black community. So a lot of the clubs in the LGBTQ community here will put you out if you are dancing in a line. So in the community, you see you have, let's see if I get the one. Ah, boom, I got it. You have these people here, they're called J-setters, so they do eight counts, like the major X. 
you have people here who are in the Greek societies, then you just have random dancers, then you have our people here who are doing prep education. So at each of our events, we had HIV and PrEP facts that were presented to the participants, and we also offered HIV testing. In, <laughs> found the better picture. <laughs> in October of 2016, we hosted a drag royale event at the same place in Club Memphis. This time we had 140 attendees, and we also did more HIV and PrEP education. We had HIV testing that was also offered, and we recruited 49 black MSM to follow up on our HPTN study, which was huge. And we also reached 1,500 people using the Facebook booster, which is game-changing in our field. So if you have noticed, one of these drag queens, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was one of the hosts for the event. So it was really, really fun to see this group of people here. It was another picture that said 35 plus at 2.30 a.m. Yeah, that was <laughs> <laughs> it was so fun because the events were non-traditional. We were having um, testing done in the clubs. We were doing it to where the community was involved. So that way we were in the clubs 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, whereas normal testing hours between 8 and 5. And you may be lucky if you get somewhere to 9 or 10, but we were testing all night, ready to fall out. But it was so worth it at the end of the day. And then our last event was the I Met Her Shop Again of All, which was a combination of all of the um, previous events, which had all of the subcultures. So the J setters, the Vulgars, the Strollers. Um, we had different themes. So this is the bizarre theme. Of course, you can tell it was very bizarre. <laughs> the J setters were back. Then we had our panel of judges. We had Vulgars. And then we also included the trans and cisgender population. So the different categories are like, Butch Queen and Pumps, or Trade with a Twist, a lot of terms, you just have to go, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and we also had Run Drag. So the biggest yeah. part of the prep education was also from our host here, Miko something, Bert, maybe. And we also had different things. So if you see on the bazaar here, we had Magnum Gold in a lot of our things, or here you'll see it as well. And then we also had True Vital Blue, because the peel is blue. So we were trying to encourage people to think about PrEP and to think about HIV. This time we had over 200 people show up, which was really, really, really great. We also um, went out for a grant with the Minority AIDS Fund, which helped fulfill our financial duties, because this is really expensive. We also incentivized a lot. So people were getting $300 prizes, $400 prizes. So it was a lot of money to be made that night. And so, you know, using this type of approach to research, it really improves the quality and validity of the research findings, and we're more likely to have, to be able to sustain some of these prevention efforts in a community setting because we have um, members of the community involved in the research process. And I, I mean, you can see from the pictures, it was a ton of fun. Um, and we pulled together different levels of expertise to pull these different efforts off. And that's what makes this um, unique. Um, I don't think without the participation of the community, the guys that we want to um, get on PrEP, it wouldn't, our, our retention as well as our recruitment it actually would not have been the way that it was had we not done a participatory um, approach to this work. And so I just, at this point, I just want to acknowledge again the headliners for their commitment and dedication to this process. Um, without the headliners, this work would not have been made possible. And then also, just for allowing someone like a little low academic like me <laughs> to be involved in the process, I mean, this is a co-learning, bi-directional process where I have learned from them and just as much as perhaps they may have learned some of the research methodology um, to pull these kind of projects off. But again, we'd like to acknowledge um, our funders, and Eddie did not give himself the credit that he deserves. He, he actually applied um, as the principal um, lead investigator for the Mid-South AIDS Fund, which um, provided some support for these uh, fund, these parties, um, these parties to be had in our community. But then we also have support from the Adolescent Trials uh, Medical, uh, the Adolescent Trials Network, excuse me, from the National Institute of Health, and then the National Institute of Minority Health and Health Disparities. And so it's just important for us as we kind of think moving forward with um, the importance of science and making advances in our research that we continue to support these community-based um, efforts. Any other thoughts? And the biggest thing of why we say one size does not fit all and we have party with a purpose 
And so their funders will be able to fund these um, innovative ideas because balls are not as big in Memphis. So we have ball, we have over 200 people coming. Balls in the past may have had three or four folks. Also, the events were free. So we did a prep ticket for talk. So if Obrinka came to talk to me, then I'll give her a ticket and she could cash in her ticket for a turkey neck, a cocktail, whatever. <laughs> whatever they had at the bar at the night, she could cash that in by giving that prep back to Dr. Pichon. Yes. So if she gave Dr. Pichon the fact that I had just told her, you get easy, like, a drink. So that's free entry, free liquor, free food if you go to more than one person. And you also can get tested. As you can see, we had a blast. The best part about it was everyone fit in. So we had some people who didn't have any public health experience, and we have people who have years of public health experience. So Dr. Pichon was not Dr. Pichon. She was Dr. Pichon. So it was like, <laughs> Really cool to have her there. People were learning from her, and it was just all about meetings. You can tell, break up to you. We had fun laughing, but when you see the events that we pulled off. Now, we had bi weekly meetings, sometimes weekly, but it all depends on the community. And we didn't pay them anything. They came, they got free food, which I thought they would have wanted more, but they were just so committed to the work that we were doing. So we actually still meeting, and so this year we'll be. Um, hosting another event at the end of May, and then we have another one in July, and hopefully more that are coming up. So we'll, um, you can look us up on Facebook. So you can just look up the headliners. You'll definitely see that we'll be in there. So come on! <laughs> but again, thank you. And this just goes to also show that you know venue-based testing is important, and it was well received by our community. And not only that, but this also this project. Um, increase the research capacity skills of our community partners and like Eddie said just guys that had not did not know a thing about public health had not done any kind of education in the community and so those are the things that we we're most grateful for and we appreciate from the community perspective in our t-shirts oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> but anyway but thank you again for um, sticking around because I know this was a long day and um, this is his project. Really. <laughs> I just kind of tag along. <laughs>